um, I guess the first question is, um, what, what was your favourite memory at, at NHL when you were playing? Oh, I think when I uh, think back to, to representing Auckland um, at either NHL or, or national tournaments, um, it's pretty hard to go past uh, my first, very first experience um, playing for the, the Auckland senior team. Uh, it wasn't NHL then, it was a national tournament. Um, so I was a pretty young guy. Um, I was 16 at the time and uh, I actually had no ambition um, or no Auckland, playing for Auckland's senior team wasn't even on my radar at that time. Uh, and I remember um, Mahindra Anka asking if I'd come along to the Auckland trials. Um, and of course I said yes, but I mean, I'm sure he would have asked my dad first because um, that was, you know, given, given my age at the time. So anyway, I went along to the trials and was um, selected in the Auckland team. And I was, you know, pretty surprised by this. Um, given I hadn't even considered uh, uh, the Auckland senior team um, at that stage. Um, but anyway, I went away to national tournament. It was in Palmerston North and, um, you know, playing at that time with um, guys like Jamie Smith, who was an idol of mine. So I so really enjoyed the experience. And I, I would kind of play like 20 minutes a game, just, you know, come off the bench, play 20 minutes a game and, and just, just loving it um, and doing well, which was, which was good. Um, but I guess the, the big memory was really um, we came to the final and we're playing against Canterbury and um, sitting in the team talk and Mahindra uh, tells me that I'm going to start the game as a right midfielder um, uh, for the team. So, so here I am playing in my first national tournament, um, starting you know right midfield um, as a 16-year-old against Auckland's old fellow Canterbury. Um, and anyway, I, I played, um, you know, my memory of it is that I, I had a really good game and, um, you know, absolutely loved that experience. We won the tournament, so that was just fantastic. Um, and then as a result of that, um, was then selected in the New Zealand team. Um, so I kind of had this whirlwind, my, my memory of, of NHL or national tournament, my first one was just this whirlwind of not... Um, not even having the team on my radar and then all of a sudden uh, having a really good experience with with um with the group and then being selected for new zealand as a result um so yeah i'll never forget just the, that sort of couple of months of my life um really uh really great time and really fond memories of of that um that particular tournament yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a pretty cool story. And obviously, um, you went on to play a, a, a quite a few more NHL National League level standards and, uh, and won a few more as well. So that was probably pretty special winning that first one. Um, but of all the ones that you've had where you've won the competition, what do you reckon are the most important factors about that, those campaigns? Um, yeah, I think um, there's probably, I'd say... Um, I guess given the amount of NHLs that I've experienced um, and, and been fortunate enough to win uh, to win quite a few of them, um, there's probably two two big factors, um, two broad factors of which um, have made Auckland teams successful over the years. Um, I think the first one uh, comes down to the, the quality of the of the players and the coaches um, that we've had. So, I mean, I'm a real big believer in um, in in having really strong foundation skills um, as a, um, a benchmark or as a, a platform for success. So, so a lot of the Auckland teams um, that have been in that were successful was that the group of players had really good core basic skills. You know, the teams could trap and pass, um, uh, retain position of the ball and, and be able to dominate teams. So that, that quality of, of player and standard of player is was a huge factor um, and of course we've always been really fortunate in Auckland to have x-factor players to throw in on top of that um, and throughout the years there's been you know a number of guys that you know over and above just that general quality within the team can then do something awesome can score the awesome goal or make the awesome play which just is able to lift, lift the team above those that were playing yeah so so the yeah that first factor definitely quality of, of players um, uh, is, is been critical in, in success. Um, and then the other factor, um, uh, which I think has been really important is, um, is the culture. 
So been really fortunate to play in some Auckland teams uh, and the ma majority of those Auckland teams that have had a really good culture. Um, you know, the team um, really engaged, really in what it's doing, what it's trying to achieve. Um, guys that, um, you know, groups that get on really well, that have respect for each other and respect for the, the coaches. Um, and, you know, when you couple quality players with a really good culture, uh, and a good feeling in a team, then um, you're going to be you're going to be pretty hard to beat, and you and you're typically going to be competing in the money end of tournaments and the in the big games. So, so yeah, the, I think that you know we've produced a lot of quality players over the years in Auckland, um, and and a lot of just really good good team people, um, and and that's I think those are sort of if I had to boil it down to two things, those are kind of the two the two main factors which I think have led to a lot of success for Auckland. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And I guess um, as you got went along further into your career and got towards the, the, the latter part of your career, obviously having cool basic skills is, is something that you don't really need to, to focus on. But as a, as a leading player, in the, uh, as a leadership player in the team, um, what, what advice could you give to somebody who is, is sort of in that position around how they can impact the, the, the side as a leader in that group? Yeah, that's a it's a, it's a really um, really interesting interesting question. Um, uh, I think there's probably um, if I was giving someone you know that was a leading player now, I'd probably give them probably three yeah three three pieces of advice. I think um, uh, the first thing a, a leading player needs to do is to um, recognise that, that that they're part of a team and and that everybody within that team has a contribution to make. So I think that that comes down to um, trust in your teammates, and I think leading players um, need to have a lot of have a lot of trust in their team, in their teammates, and their um, and be be, I guess, willing to 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 let things go and let other people within the team play their role. I mean, you can't go through a, a tournament or a campaign um, uh, trying to do everything as an individual. So so recognizing that you're part of a team. Um, it is kind of the first thing I'd say. Um, There's a really good quote actually, and I'm I'm watching uh, the Chicago Bulls documentary oh, yeah. at the moment, The Last Dance, which is real good. And um, one of Michael Jordan's famous quotes is, um, uh, "Individuals win games, and teamwork and intelligence win championships." And I think for a leading player, that's a really nice quote um, to have in the back of the mind. Um, yeah, um, uh, second piece of advice I'd, I think I'd give a, a leading player would be um, that it's really important um, as a leader in a group to drive um, standards and expectations. So that kind of um, leading by example when, when you're at training, um, uh, you know, doing things really well with a lot of quality, um, um, being, a, being a, you know, a strong voice in the group and helping pull others along with you. Um, you know, and I think a lot of driving standards can be done through actions um, and how you perform on the field, how you, you're at, what your attitude is at training um, and in and around the team environment. Um, so I think that's really important. And then I think the third thing that I would um, uh, say to a, a leading player within a team is to really um, take responsibility in, in big moments. Um, particularly uh, in tournaments, there's going to be games where, which are really tight, um, where, where you're going to need just a little bit extra to do something to win. And I think leading players need to step up in those moments. It might be, you know, 2-2 two, two in a match with 10 minutes to go and, you know, and you receive the ball and the attacking end of the field. So that's the moment where that, that player needs to create the goal-scoring opportunity or win that penalty corner. Um, you know, or it might be in the dying seconds and you just, and you, as a leading player, take responsibility, get on the ball, control the tempo of the game, um, uh, you know, things like that. So I think um, for leading players to, to acknowledge that they're part of a team and they can't do everything all game, every game, um, but when it's, when it's their turn and when there's um, someone needs to step up, then, then that's the responsibility of the leading players to... To um, to put themselves out there and 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 do that role. Nice. Yeah. So those would be, I guess, the you know three three things that I'd 
got uh, bits, of, bits of advice that I'd give to give to leading players that are coming through through the teams. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. It's, yeah, there's some some very good points in there. Um, and and the last question, really. So last year, um, you guys had Barry Middleton come play for your club side at, at Somerville, and um, that that added to to your team. Obviously, someone with such a, a high amount of experience and games under his belt at international level, and you would have played against him quite a lot of your career as well. Um, what, what was it like um, having him in that environment um, as a club member, but also having him, you personally play with him? I, I, was that your first time playing with him alongside him rather than against him? Yeah, yeah, it was. Look, Barry was um, just fantastic for some of them. Um, yeah, I played against Barry a lot. So um, obviously New Zealand versus England or Great Britain. Um, he was always a fixture in, in those teams for a long, long time. Um, but also played against Jens Barry a lot in Holland. Um, you know, I played for Rotterdam Hockey Club. He was playing for HGC. And where um, at the time we were both there, there was quite a big rivalry between those two clubs. Um, and, um, yeah, so a lot of, a lot of uh, experience playing against Barry. Um, um, but also developing a bit of a friendship off the field as well, particularly um, during our, our time in Holland. Um, so when he was coming to Somerville, I was, um, you know, it sort of suggested to the club that if this is an opportunity that we can uh, have a crack at, then we should just absolutely go for it. Um, and I guess the stars kind of aligned and he was, um, you know, keen to, I guess, take a year off and think about his career. And and that led him uh, down to New Zealand Somerville, which was great. Um, so obviously his playing ability was was a huge factor um, for our team. Having someone of his his quality was awesome. Um, and personally, I really enjoyed playing with him um, versus playing against them. You know, um, so so that was a, a really cool experience for me. Um, the guys in the team really um, uh, took to his coaching, and and a real credit to Barry because I think it could be quite easy for someone to come in as a player coach and just sort of um, go through the motions a little bit but but I guess some of the things that stood out for me was how how thorough he was and and how he uh, looked after the team how he ran practices how he organized game days a really professional um, and I think what was really nice is that he came from a different country with a slightly different perspective on hockey so he brought fresh ideas and um so guys are hearing things that they haven't heard before and that's that's energizing that's engaging um and none of it was radical it was usually just something explained in a slightly different way um and so i think the team i know i did but the team really enjoyed that fresh perspective um and the other thing that um was really good from barry is he was a really positive coach so he was all about um you know taking action and um it didn't matter if if people made mistakes um, trying things because as a team um, that was it was our responsibility to to work together and, and to not worry about that sort of thing. So he really brought this kind of real positive attitude, um, which which the guys really took to. Um, and, and so in that he really developed our team culture, um, and at the same time he was he was developing individuals and, and adding to their their skills and capabilities. So yeah, great to have him here. Wish we could have kept him, um, and who knows one day hey we might be able to get him back involved in Auckland hockey or, or even with the Black Sticks. Um, who knows? But yeah, great asset to have have around for for a season. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, it was um, it was definitely challenging playing against him and. Just sort of, you could see a, a bit of a change in a lot of the other players around him that sort of, you could see that they bought into it. So it was cool to see. And obviously playing against someone like that's pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's not every day you get um, someone of that quality coming, you know, um, stopping by. Um, so yeah, it'd be awesome if we could do it. Yeah. Um,